Today we're talking about the Electoral College, the only college in America with a conservative bias. A viewer recently asked me to look into it, and me being me, I got very excited because I love this sort of thing. The Electoral College, the part of our government so popular that it's the subject that has had more constitutional amendments proposed to reform or eliminate it than any other subject. Specifically more than 700 proposals to Congress. I mean, this thing couldn't be less popular if it was playing the clarinet in high school. It's only been amended successfully once in 1804, the Twelfth Amendment, an amendment that separated voting for president and vice president, because the losing candidate kept becoming the vice president, although a Trump-Hillary ticket would be very entertaining. So first, why do we have the Electoral College? Well, it's to make sure that if the majority of Americans vote for an unqualified or crazy candidate, we can just kind of nudge people towards the right answer. Basically, the goal was to ensure we only have presidents with greatest temperament that anybody has because we know how to win. Clearly that's working. Basically, in the United States, each state gets certain votes for the president. But what you're actually voting for are electors who pledge to vote for candidates in the electoral college. And unfortunately, sometimes they can't even do that right. Get ready to yell, you had one job. Because in the 2016 general election, we had a record seven electors vote for people they hadn't pledged to vote for. Because democracy. Three Democratic electors from Washington state voted for Colin Powell? Which, come on, you're Democrats, at least vote for Chafee. Another Democratic elector from Washington voted for Native American activist Faith Spotted Eagle, which means, hey, one twelfth of Washington voters involuntarily voted for him too. Colin Powell doesn't seem like that much of a waste of a vote anymore, huh? A Democratic elector from Hawaii voted for Bernie Sanders, and two Republicans from Texas voted for Kasich. A few other Democrats tried not to vote for Clinton too, but it was illegal for them to do so in their states. Hard to believe she lost. You can actually see them vote too. Protesters shouting shame on you as electoral college members cast their votes in Pennsylvania, where Trump beat Hillary Clinton by less than 1%. 20 votes for Donald J. Trump. So who the heck are those people? Well, using the National Archives website, I can tell you who they're not. Specifically, state officials who have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the United States, or given aid and comfort to its enemies. <laughs> well, after the last year we've had, I'm certainly glad we have that one in writing. <clears throat> Ted Kaczynski from Washington State is voting for either Obama or a bomb. I can't tell, I'm having trouble reading this. It also can't be a senator or representative or person holding an office of trust or profit under the United States. Because of the Bush versus Gore situation that we'll get to in a bit, I have to let you know that this next part isn't always true. But generally, the parties create slates of potential electors based on, well, them not being domestic terrorists or elected officials. Pretty low bar. Usually it's friends, which is why you get things like In 2004, an elector in Minnesota cast his vote for someone named John Ewards, which was almost the name of John Kerry's running mate. <laughs> it's funny because one tenth of the electorate voted accidentally for Ewards because someone wasn't really paying a bit of attention when filling out his ballot. Now, because Kerry won the majority of districts, the state had an entirely democratic slate of electors. So the nine other people who were paying even the slightest bit of attention were able to make all of the electoral votes from that state go to carry. Although Ewards did put up a pretty good fight. Yeah, we're definitely not picking from the cream of the crop here. So you got your electors set up, then what happens? Well, election day, where again, not always because of Bush v. Gore, but usually the candidate who wins the popular vote in the most districts it's their party's slate of electors chosen to vote on which candidate gets the state electoral votes. Now this makes these protest votes possible because, oh no, one of the 12 electors voted to give their vote to Abraham Lincoln's corpse. Well, the rest of us are going to vote for the person running from our party. This is except for Nebraska and Maine, two states desperately vying for any fun fact about themselves. They choose elections based on district by district 
Republicans win one district, well, they get a Republican elector. And Democrats won this district, they get a Democrat elector. And those bipartisan electors vote for who the state supports. Most of this stuff is actually on a state by state basis, because why standardize how we run federal elections? Of course, at its core, this is a constitutional issue about electors. So I just kind of wish there was some sort of high profile Supreme Court case dealing with this exact issue. Literally one of the closest elections in American history. 104 million Americans voted, only a 300,000 vote difference. 600 votes approximately separated the um, Gore and Bush in the state of Florida, and now by one vote on the Supreme Court, this election is over. What this means is that the slate of electors that has already been certified will now have conclusive effect. They support George Bush, they're going to the Electoral College from the state of Florida. George Bush wins 271 to 267. Well, that sounds pretty relevant. I'm so excited. I finally have an excuse to research Bush v. Gore. Why did Chad hang himself? We'll find out. It's 2018 though, so wow, anyone under 18 has no idea what I'm talking about. In 2000, George Bush and Al Gore were both running for president in the Democrats' best attempt to make Al Gore seem to have more personality than his teleprompter. It was a ridiculously close race and came down to Florida, the Gunshine State, a state best known for, well, being one of the weirdest states when it comes to electoral votes. So back to Florida on that fateful night in 2000, because something unprecedented happened. Since there is a subsequent contest and the outcome is unclear, it becomes our lawful duty to determine the electors of this great state. The 2000 election is spiraling out of control and we must stop it now. It was too close to call, which triggered an automatic machine recount where Bush won the popular vote by about 900 votes? Which, wow, remember to register. This was close enough that Gore could legally say, yeah, maybe the machines got it wrong in four important electoral districts. You know, Y2K had just happened, so sure, forget the machines. This led to the much more reliable method of counting by hand, which seems as dumb as it sounds. Ballot eight. Yeah, wow. Hey, can we get those computers back in here? Florida's Secretary of State said each of those four electoral districts had one week to hand count all of those votes, and they were only up to ballot eight in the clip I played. Gore petitioned the Florida Supreme Court and got that deadline extended to 19 days, which come on Supreme Court, round that thing up to 20. Here's where things got weird though. Only two counties made it. One county gave up trying, and the fourth finished two hours late and was not allowed to hand in its tally. Still, with just two counties recounts, Bush's lead had shrunk even further. It was now just about 500 votes. So the Florida Supreme Court granted the Gore campaign's request for a larger recount of 70,000 questionable ballots. This just led to a tidal wave of confusion because there were tens of thousands of these ballots that had been improperly punched. And we all know that Gore supporting environmentalists would be the one who wouldn't want to waste a perfectly good piece of paper by poking a hole in it. So the question became, who's going to get the electors for these key districts? And with that... We'll hear argument now in number 00949, George W. Bush and Richard Cheney versus Albert Gore at Al. Now I can already hear the sound of a thousand key thousand, wow, someone's optimistic about viewership, but thousands of keyboards typing that Bush v. Gore isn't about the electoral college. And you're right, it wasn't. But the published decision definitely was. Let me read you a statement that'll pique your interest and then give you some context in it. In 2000, the published decision said the individual citizen has no federal constitutional right to vote for electors for the President of the United States, unless and until the state legislature chooses a statewide election as the means to implement its power to appoint members to the Electoral College. How very democratic. That's a quote from part of Article 2 of the Constitution, and it played a big part in this decision. Because the overall question was how much power a state has in getting electors to the electoral college when influential districts were just too close to call. As I said earlier, there were thousands of ballots that had been discarded because of, well, 
We seem to have a situation here in which there is a subcategory of ballots in which we're assuming for the sake of argument, since we know no better, that there is no genuinely subjective indication beyond what can be viewed uh, as either a dimple or a hanging chad. Yeah, if you hadn't fully penetrated your ballot, your vote was discarded. And I heard the term dimpled and hanging chad so many times in the audio of this case. And why chad, by the way? I mean, if there's anyone who's punching his card all the way through, it's that frat bro chad. This argument of whether these votes should be counted in specific recount districts, because well, you can clearly see the person tried to vote, they just didn't use enough force to puncture the piece of paper, had all sorts of problems from... Why isn't the standard the one that voters are instructed to follow, for goodness sakes? I mean, it couldn't be clearer. Well, I mean, why, why don't we go to that standard? Well, Your Honor, because in Florida law since 1917, Darby against State, the, the Florida, Florida Supreme Court has held that where a voter's intent can be discerned, even if they don't do what they're told, that's supposed to be counted. Yeah, if you can tell what they wanted, that's a vote. Only problem is that the machines didn't pick up your dimpled chads. So, I hope you have a ton of people who like to stare at dimpled pieces of paper for hours on end and have no party affiliation whatsoever. Although, let's face it, if you're the type of person who would be willing to count hundreds of thousands of ballots all day, every day, party probably isn't in your lexicon. So what do you do when you have an upcoming deadline, two elected districts that have submitted recounts and two that haven't, and everything just generally spinning out of control? Well, the government procrastinated pretty hard on this one, but on December 12th, the Supreme Court ruled that no full state recounts could be done in time, and that recounts in certain districts that included these hanging chads would be unconstitutional because they would dilute other votes. So, again, what do you do? In the same breath that we are told that this session is about preserving the votes of Floridians by the majority resolution today, we will be disenfranchising every single voter who went to the polls on November 7th. While we are told that this session is about respecting the rules, the majority's resolution will declare irrelevant all of the rules that this legislature has created to govern and resolve elections. Sounds like they found just a great solution. Remember how up top I said you're not guaranteed to vote for your elector? Well, yeah. The whole thing was foobar and Florida's Republican dominated house just kind of voted to approve 25 electors who would vote for Bush. The vote was set to go to Florida's Republican dominated Senate but Gore pulled out of the race before it was passed. And don't worry, this was all above board because according to the decision, the state, of course, after granting the franchise in the special context of Article 2, can take back the power to appoint electors. Thanks for putting the of course in there, Supreme Court. I mean, we all knew that, right? This led to this not at all awkward New York Times quote. Governor Jeb Bush has indicated his willingness to sign special legislation intended to award Florida's 25 electoral college votes to his brother, Governor George W. Bush of Texas, even as the election results were still being contested. Well, of course. I mean, can you imagine how awkward that Thanksgiving would have been that year if he hadn't done that? So remember to register to vote, because this type of weird stuff happens, and when you get in that voting booth, just wail on that ballot. Don't be gentle. Really make sure you punch it all the way through. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old school way by clicking the subscribe button below. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and remember to give me a thumbs up. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.